Hello and welcome to Future Proof, where we look at how advances in science and technology are changing our lives and the way we do business. I'm Matt Goodrick and this month I'm here in China to find out why more and more startups are heading east. Coming up on the program. It's been called the new Silicon Valley. We check out the bustling tech hub of Shenzhen. In Silicon Valley, it's every garage is a startup. Here you actually see garage factories. Reporting for work, how the commercial drone industry is taking off. They can help with your job, but can they transport you to it? We speak to the company with plans to roll out passenger drones. It's definitely coming. It's something we're pushing very hard. And we meet the man who embraced technology and built a mixed martial arts empire. Welcome to Shenzhen, China's very own Silicon Valley, home to rising startups and independent innovators. Once a fishing settlement of just 300,000 people, now a booming hub of more than 10 million. It's a place where ideas can become prototypes in just a matter of days. Jessica Omari has been finding out what makes this maker's paradise tick. It's the first time ever that a table tennis robot worked with an app. Alex and Harrison Chen grew up in China playing table tennis against each other. After years of epic showdowns, they split up, heading off to study abroad. But both felt they'd lost their perfect partner, which got them thinking. What if we can make this one robot that just play at your level and also improve, it can also improve. Enter Trainerbot, the ping pong robot with an impressive serve. We created this YouTube-like sharing platform for sports. It's the first time that players can augment their training through a robot. Despite studying in California and Toronto, starting their business in Shenzhen felt like a no-brainer. It gives us a huge advantage as hardware developers that when we want to find a motor, we don't have to limit ourselves to the motor we can find in the shops. We can go to the market and compare the motor from, let's say, an automated blind system or a motor for a car. And you can pretty much get all of them back to test. They say this huge variety of components is key to success. The PCB is a circuit board for TrainerBot, which is essentially the brain of the entire robot. In States, we make a PCB in in about two to three weeks. Here, with the amount of $7, I can get a PCB in two days. And that means we can crank up a robot every single week. Where are we? We are in Huashang Bay. We're in yeah. Seg Market, yeah. which is kind of the epicenter of the wholesale electronics market here in Shenzhen. Uh, and this is where I come when I want to buy something for a project. It doesn't have any of the laser markings inside it like the used one does. Scotty Allen, a former Google employee, rose to tech fame after he decided to build an iPhone 6S from scratch, just from parts bought in Shenzhen's many hardware markets. Can we buy all of the parts? So we buy phone glass, we buy the digitizer. We... This video of Scotty doing just that gathered over 8 million views. Having sourced every spot of glue and tiny screw here, who better to show us around? If I need something that I'm having a hard time finding, or I need it quickly, I come to Andy and he tracks it down for me. If Andy doesn't have what you want here, he says he can source it, with access to hundreds of thousands of different integrated circuits, or ICs. 30 minutes, and then I come here and pick it up from him. 30 minutes? Wow. Yeah, pretty much anything I want in 30 minutes. So this is all of this is accelerating how quickly people can produce I mean, it's, prototypes. And it's literally reducing your, your lead time down from days to minutes. It's not only the many varied components, you can buy the tools of the trade here too. So you can come to one of these markets, but with nothing but knowledge and leave with everything you need for your product. Yes, absolutely. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. Hacks, a hardware accelerator, helps companies like Trainerbot navigate this vast ecosystem. In Silicon Valley, it's every garage is a startup. Here, you actually see garage factories. It really blew my mind. It's literally a garage, and some guy just buy an industrial machine and just shove it in, and now he has a factory. As we feel our way around Shenzhen, the pace is obvious. It's fast and relentless. Feel the shot, and you'll get used to it. Okay. Cool. 
as a foreigner, it takes some time to get to grips with. In the meantime, I think Trainerbot and I need to work on my top spin. We're used to seeing drones doing this, taking our videos and selfies. But as the industry continues to take off, unmanned aerial vehicles are being put to a wide range of commercial uses, from animal conservation to delivering blood, surveying buildings to fertilizing crops. And Shenzhen company DJI is making sure that China is at the forefront of the industry. Spraying pesticides and fertilizers on crops is a crucial process for farmers to develop healthy and plentiful harvests. But it's laborious and often hazardous. For many farmers in China, like this one, it's a manual operation using backpacks. But the use of drones is revolutionizing this sector. Drone making giant DJI is helping farmers in China and around the world to spray their crops more efficiently. This drone does the job 40 times quicker than manual spraying. In China and, and uh, Korea and Japan, they use backpack spraying quite frequently. Backpack spraying um, is highly inefficient. People get contamination poisoning, their contact poisoning. And in the US, it, there's a lot of overflight using uh, biplanes to spray crops, but all the pesticide disperses very quickly and it sprays the entire area. Using a drone, you're able to get very close to exactly where the affected crops are and just spray those crops. DJI has been selling versions of this drone since late 2015 at a cost of 12,000 US dollars. They've also developed a data collection drone using visual and thermal imaging to assess crop health and power lines. Set up 10 years ago, DJI has grown into one of the world's leading drone making companies in an industry which Goldman Sachs predicts will be worth $100 billion by 2020. Agriculture is one sector they're dominating, but this success has been built on the development of their consumer products. So we have technology that is flexible enough to be able to use uh, out on vacation with your family or out inspecting a power line. And it's also at a price point that's accessible enough for both of those audiences. DJI's success has helped Shenzhen become a hub for the drone making industry, with both hardware and software companies on hand to make things happen quickly. It's one of the reasons Osvaldo Law came to China from Ecuador four years ago. His company, Shenzhen Drones, also makes agricultural drones for farmers back in his homeland. If I was in Ecuador, it would take me one month to get the spare parts. And you have to do all the custom tax and imports and everything. But here, you just go out the, to the corner, to the next uh, shop, and you can buy all the parts. The backdrop of Shenzhen allowed Osvaldo to spot a gap in the market back home and his company is now providing a service he says is proving hugely beneficial to farmers across South America. I saw a big market because Ecuador and South America are very big agriculture markets. So this uh, one thing led to another. Now I'm selling this drone, exporting to South Ecuador, Peru, Colombia. Osvaldo says he hopes to break into other regions at a time when the marketplace is growing. Local drone expert Lok Chow agrees that there are still plenty of opportunities for startups despite the growing dominance of brands like DJI. And he believes mainland China is the perfect place for them to prosper. So I put this on? DJI's bread and butter is still consumer drones. Ready? Let's go. The large proportion of the three million drones they're expected to ship this year will be for recreational use. DJI's latest models on show allow an immersive experience. Wow. <laughs> so I am seeing what the drone is seeing now. So I'm, I'm up in the trees, yes. essentially. And then there's autonomous drones, making it a lot easier to take that selfie with friends. So of course, selfie. Yeah, selfie. Okay. And then we pose. Yeah. Recreational use still dominates the market, making up $3.7 billion of the $6 billion in drone sales. But finding new ways of developing commercial use for drones could be the key to taking this industry to new heights.
Okay, time for a short break here on Future Proof, but plenty still to come, including... We're heading to Hong Kong to find out if drones are the transport of the not-so-distant future.